So yes, everybody, you just saw me using my M1 iPad Pro as a monitor or a screen for my PlayStation 4. Let me show you how to do it. Let's get into it. So before I actually get into how I was able to make this happen, I do want to give credit to Wesley Hilliard. He is the co-host of the Apple Insider podcast and a writer for Apple Insider. I saw that he posted this article and I just absolutely had to try it. And honestly, it's very simple to get this set up. And no, this is not just me using PS4 Remote Play because this will work with any console or pretty much anything that has an HDMI out. So the reason this is able to happen is because you might have noticed that with iPadOS 17, which isn't out to the public yet, but is in beta if you guys want to try it out, Apple gave us the ability to use an external camera as a webcam, only for FaceTime right now, but that was one of the features that Apple touted as an upgrade to iPadOS 17. People firstly didn't like where the actual camera was placed on an iPad Pro, it should have been in the horizontal position as opposed to the actual vertical position, but then secondly, people wanted to use maybe their DSLR camera or an external webcam to be able to do that. But little did we know that Apple giving us that ability kind of gave us a little bit of an opening to do what I'm about to show you. So before we get started, let me mention to you exactly what you need to get this going. So obviously you're gonna need an iPad. Now it doesn't need to be an iPad Pro, but it's any iPad that has a USB-C connection. So unfortunately any iPad that has a lightning cable will not work. But now most iPads do have USB-C, so an iPad 10th generation, even the iPad mini, the iPad Air, and of course the iPad Pros will be able to do this. Secondly, you're gonna to need to actually get a HDMI converter capture card. So basically what this does is allows you to turn your USB-C port into an actual HDMI in. So you can actually kind of use it as a TV or as a monitor. And that's what those capture cards are for. And they're used very frequently, especially if you're somebody that uses a DSLR camera as your webcam. I was actually somebody that never had done that, so I had to buy one of these on Amazon, but they're 10 to $20 depending on which one you want, and I'll link one down below. And then lastly, you're gonna need access to this app called Capture Pro. Now this is, again, it's an iPadOS 17, so you're gonna to need to have an iPadOS 17 iPad running this, and then also the Capture Pro app is in test flight right now. I'm gonna link it down below, it's free to access, depending on how many slots are available, but if you really wanna try this out, all you have to do is click down below, download the test flight application, then get permission to actually do it, it's totally free, it happens instantly as long as there's actual openings involved, and then you can start to use the Capture Pro application. And what the Capture Pro application lets you do is again, treat your iPad as a dummy monitor. So it lets you treat it as if it is a regular TV screen that has an HDMI input and allows you to do what I'm about to show you. Again, when I got this to work, I was absolutely surprised. I didn't think it was gonna work that easily because so many things and nuances kind of worked and they worked out so well. So before we get into everything that I love about this, let's actually get this going, get this started. So. So far I've tried it with two different consoles. I tried it with my Nintendo Switch and I tried it with my PlayStation 4. I also have an Xbox One kind of sitting around but I don't really use that that often. I just wanted to try it with this. And again, I'm not a huge gamer to begin with so I don't have the latest PS5 console or the latest Xbox console. I just kind of use whatever I have laying around. But again, for the PlayStation 4, it's very simple. All you have to do is make sure that your device gets power. So you need an actual power plug to plug in your PlayStation 4 or to plug in your dock switch. And then after that, all you do is you grab that little dongle that you bought, so that capture card dongle, you plug in an HDMI cable to the console of your choice, plug the other end to the actual dongle, and then plug that in to your iPad itself. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You actually plug it in directly into your iPad's USB-C port, so it goes directly in there, or if you wanna charge it at the same time, you can either use a Magic Keyboard as a stand with that secondary plug to actually let it charge at the same time, or you can use an actual hub. There's plenty of iPad hubs, and I'll link some down below for you guys to try out because not every iPad works with the Magic Keyboard. So if you're in a situation where you need to charge your iPad and you wanna do this at the same time, you're gonna to need to find yourself a hub that has two USB-C ports and allows this to happen. And now once you have all that set up and you know exactly where you wanna do this, all you have to do is turn on your PlayStation, turn on your Switch, turn on your Xbox, turn on whatever console you're using, and then make sure that you open up the Capture Pro application and then voila, it starts working. And it's completely seamless, right? It works exactly how you want it to. You can full screen it if you want. You can keep it in the same aspect ratio that the video or the video game is supposed to be in. And again, I'm just so surprised how well it works. There's zero latency whatsoever because again, it's using the console itself. So I'm not using remote play. I'm not using some cloud service. I'm using the actual PlayStation, the console. So there's zero latency with the controller. One thing that they actually were able to figure out was to get audio out of the iPad. One of my biggest gripes about things like stage manager and extended monitor support is that when you use your iPad with an extended monitor, it's going to default your audio to that monitor or to a Bluetooth speaker and you're incapable of using your amazing iPad Pro speakers as your main source of audio. This actually is able to do that. So you'll start to hear the noise coming out of your iPad. So you can see I have Madden behind me and it's playing the music. 
So I think that's amazing. And of course you can still use your AirPods, your AirPods Pro, your AirPods Max, or any Bluetooth speaker and connect it directly to the iPad, but it's going to work seamlessly, which I absolutely love. So latency is zero, audio comes out of the iPad by default, and it's a simple plug and play. There's really nothing else about it. The only thing that I had to purchase was that $16 capture, kind of like converter thing, and then everything else I already had. I had my console, I had the controller, the Capture Pro application is free to use during test flight. They might make it a paid application after they see how many people are gonna start using it, but for now it's totally free. And then again, you do need to be on iPadOS 17. This will not work on iPadOS 16 because again, the bypass is the ability to use an external webcam and that's what's allowing this to happen. And once I was able to use this and play with it, it kind of just brought me back because I remember always wanting to have a portable solution for my Xbox, or for my PlayStation when I was little. Like, I wanted to be able to just carry around a briefcase and they used to make those, but I remember they were super clunky, super expensive. You know, it wasn't great quality from the monitor itself, but this, you can kind of bring it anywhere you want. Again, if as long as you have a power source, you are good to go. So you can plug in your PlayStation, plug in your Nintendo Switch into power, and then make sure that the HDMI is going to the iPad Pro, and all of a sudden you have a mobile setup. The way I have it standing right now is with the PlayStation setup, I keep the PlayStation on the bottom, and then I have my Lab 22 iPad stand, which I absolutely love. It's very sturdy. It works perfectly for this little setup that I have right here. And then I put the iPad on there, plug everything in that I need to plug in, and then that is my quote unquote mobile kind of gaming situation if I wanna bring it with me because that'll easily fit into a backpack if I'm going somewhere for an extended period of time, if you're going to a lake house, if you're going on vacation that doesn't have a console, and you just wanna have a portable gaming situation that you aren't relying on internet, you're not relying on a streaming service or a cloud gaming or a remote play where you need to leave your console on at home and then play it from a distance. Those are all things that I've done in the past. They're just, they're not perfect. This is absolutely perfect. And then lastly, even though this is a test flight application and we are on iPadOS 17 beta, I'm on beta four right now, there's been zero hiccups, zero performance issues, there's no lagging, there's no freezing, there's no quitting out of the application. Oh, and on top of all that, it still works with Stage Manager. So if for some reason you wanna have a smaller view on your 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and maybe you have like Twitter on the left-hand side, or maybe like a walkthrough or some sort of tutorial video happening, it's gonna work and it all works perfectly well. So again, so many ways to really kind of take advantage of this. And I just think it's a great proof of concept of what Apple is kind of letting us do without letting us know that we can do those things. And it's amazing what people in the community are able to do. But overall, I love this setup and I needed to share with everybody so you're aware that you can actually use your iPad as a gaming monitor for whatever game console you want. And this of course will work with the newer ones like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox One X or whatever they're on right now. And obviously the OLED Nintendo Switch which I just have the regular Nintendo Switch, and even that worked perfect. Like I said, this came from Apple Insider Wesley. I wanna make sure he gets the credit because I did not find this out, and he did a complete walkthrough on how to actually do it, but I absolutely love this solution. I think it's great. I think it's way more than just gimmicky and a show-off thing. I can see this being used a lot of the times, especially maybe if you have an iPad mini with a small console. I think it's a match made in heaven, but that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you did enjoy, leave a comment down below, and let me know, would you use something like this? Is this still too bulky for you, or is this something that now you're immediately gonna go out and get? Everything will be linked down below from the items that you need to all the information that you need to the article and that's going to do it everybody if you guys want to watch some more ipad os mac os or ios content click on one of these right here and until next time i'm fernando i'm out of here peace